Good afternoon, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Tuesday, December 30th, 2025 is the date here. 12.38 p.m. California time. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 2.3 across California, also a 2.6 here around the Indonesia area there in the uh, red flag. Pretty, pretty good cluster of activity again around the Philippines area southward, but also notice up here on the globe, got that swarm stirring back up here off of the Nankai Trough with a pretty significant amount of earthquake activity, including a 5.5. Let's go ahead and start over there real quick and show you guys. It's an area of interest here because this has been swarming off and on over the past year or so. And they're a little concerned that this may be uh, leading to some uh, potential here for some mega quake activity along the subduction zone of the Nankai Trough. And then I'm also watching this specific area myself. This swarm that's stirring up uh, is a, a little bit further south here of that swarm that we had throughout the year. Uh, that's why I'm saying it's more concerning to watch this entire area here uh, for some larger potential because it does have that uh, uh, amount of time that's passed since we've seen a large event out here and it, it could very well happen pretty soon. Um, there's a number of quakes there besides the five pointer that the USGS is showing. Looks like uh, some threes and fours, even some activity up there along the Crow Camp chat. Uh, let me check the. Uh, um, the Japan Meteorological Agency here real quick and see what they're reporting. See how intense that swarm is. It's going to be um, uh, this area right here close to the uh, Shima Island adjacent sea here. That's where that 5.6 struck early this morning. Let's go check that out here real quick and see down towards the southwest here of that area. It looks like... Uh, Looks like it just stirred up at midnight following that 5.6. A uh, couple other threes and fours in there as well. Uh, nothing big yet, but you know, I do want to watch this area closely because it does have some potential. Uh, we've seen so much movement happening around this area recently, you know, with, with only, um, you know, we've seen a couple larger events, but nothing in terms of significantly releasing the strain that's been building up out here uh, for quite a while. So I'll continue to watch that uh, as we get uh, some activity stirring up in that region. Uh, let's see, Papua New Guinea area outside the region here. Got a 5.1 this morning as well. Let's see, let's check this out real quick. USGS reporting that uh, as a 5.1, six miles deep. Pretty shallow here. Let's see what's going on here across the West Coast. Not a whole lot there in, in the uh, Pacific Northwest. Relatively quiet looking uh, for now couple more earthquakes here across uh, northern California and even over here across northern Nevada. That area around Valmy, Nevada is starting to swarm a little bit as well. There's an earthquake coming in there. This has been a, a, a source of significant swarming here in the past few months or so. Starting to stir back up. Also up here around the Sheldon National uh, Re Wildlife Refuge. Uh, a couple more aftershocks there around the Susanville area. And then some over here across Northern California. You guys seen that picture out here? Kind of pointing a, kind of pointing a pressurized event here across this area. And of course, uh, I firmly believe here that uh, what goes on out here across the Cascadia, far as stress and strain, can show up uh, well inland, away from the plate boundary, and it's starting to show quite a bit of strain out here in this fashion, leading up to the Cascadia, the southern end. Um, Two more earthquakes there, it looks like, today. Well, one after midnight, uh, 2.4. Let's kind of keep an eye on that. We're, we're past we're past any any level of reoccurrence interval in the last 6,000 years. We're well, well past that, you know, and it's a little concerning here because we could be looking at either a full rupture coming up, which is possible considering we haven't had a partial rupture in between the last big event, which is back in, you know, 1700. The Cascadia subduction zone is... Uh, uh, it, you can't take that lightly out here. This thing could make life quite, uh, um, you know, uncomfortable out here. I think that may be the word um, when it does pop. It's just it's concerning that we haven't had a partial rupture out here, so that means the likelihood of a, a full event increases. Either way, we're past that window of um, reoccurrence interval here. 
All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Southern California. Well, let's look at Lake Tahoe real quick. Outside Lake Tahoe, 2.4. Pretty shallow earthquake up the Sierra Nevada mountains. Bay Area, a handful of smaller quakes here, but really nothing big. There's the one on the uh, Calaveras Fault there. San Ramon area, just a couple earthquakes there from yesterday. Uh, the park filled section, pretty quiet looking down there for now. Extreme Southern California, a couple earthquakes out here in the, uh, all these fracture zones here. Uh, Lavic Lake fault zone, a couple two stirring up out there uh, this morning. As you can see there on the map, nothing big. San Andreas Fall continuing to sleep. Uh, let's hope that remains that way, but you know, it, it can't stay sleeping forever. That's that's the facts there. Yellowstone National Park, really nothing showing up there. Uh, we will double check that here and see what we have for the uh, USGS Yellowstone website here. I remember that one's not working right. I think this one's a good one that at least works a little bit. This one is up and running. One earthquake there from late last night, about 9 or 10 o'clock, maybe 8 o'clock here, uh, California time. A little point four, nothing big. There's really hardly anything going on there at Yellowstone. Uh, Texas oil field still rocking and rolling, although a little light out there in terms of the multitude counts. 5.3 well underneath Bolivia right now. That's a pretty deep earthquake. That earthquake just coming in as well uh, in the last, uh, looks like last 20 minutes or so. That's the second deep earthquake here in this area in a little while. Uh, the first one was back on the 27th here, 5.6 further down the road, but still underneath this area, 365 miles deep. Now we got another one larger, just as deep further up north. So we got a little concerning setup here that we need to watch this area of the subduction zone. That's the Peru Chile Trench here uh, along this area. There's some activity up here um, somewhat deep earlier uh, a few days ago as well. But norm normally these deeper earthquakes way down into the subduction zone uh, can trigger a lot of larger events upstream here, or at least one large event. So uh, we do have to keep an eye on that closely. That's uh, the Peru Chile Trench here. In the last 30 days, we've seen a, a decent amount of earthquake activity, but these are newer, deeper quakes here, and uh, they've only happened in the last couple days. So that makes sense here to watch this area along the Peru Chile Trench. It's, of course, where the uh, largest earthquake ever recorded happened here, southwest of Santiago, Chile, back in 1960, I believe is the date. Uh, 9.5 earthquake there, that big one. A giant one. Uh, a little uncertain on if we have, you know, enough for this area for another 9.5, considering it was fairly recent. But then again, 1965, that was a little, some time ago. Can't believe it's already going to be uh, 2026. But either way, the Peru Chile Trench out here, you know, it's it can uh, it can get some big damaging earthquakes out here, big ones. So just watch that, considering these deeper quakes right now. All right, uh, let's see what else we got around the planet. New Zealand, not so much going on down there. Uh, let's see, Mediterranean. 3.5 there off the coast of Italy. Nothing big going on there for now. Some activity stirring up around the, uh, it looks like around the Turkey area. Off the coast there of Syria, 4.3 this morning. Looks like some smaller quake activity as well in there, 2.7. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on there across the board for now. Um, yeah, just kind of keep an eye on things here. Things are starting to move. Let's see what we got here. Another earthquake coming in, it looks like. Uh, that's that one up around uh, Lake Tahoe. But uh, we'll just keep an eye on things here, folks. See how it plays out. Uh, kind of flaring out here up into the sea flare. These guys bumped up the flare threat to 25% chance with a red symbol here. What is that all about? <laughs> um, well, these guys got 10% chance for a strong X flare, but then up here shows 25% chance. Let me see what's going on here. 
25% chance there's 43.21. Let's go see 43.21. Over here. 43.21, but the latest imagery is gone. It's off here. It's not, That's just barely visible. Uh, I wouldn't even call that earth facing, so I don't see a 25% chance there for any explorer activity. If that's the sunspot in question, and that's what he has marked there. All these other sunspots here, folks, really, I'm not seeing anything at all uh, in terms of major complexity <clears throat> that would require a strong X flare threat or that has an X flare threat. There's a little area up here that may harbor some M flare potential, but that's just kind of been doing a little um, stabilization event up here recently and then popping up occasional compl uh, complexity areas but yeah i i'm gonna stick with probably a five to ten percent chance there for some x flare activity even those these guys are showing 25 uh 60 50 to 60 percent chance there for an m flare but as you can see we're just uh co hovering in the low c flare category there is some instability going on but i believe it's off of that sunspot that is now you know just off the western limb there the one that's got the 25 percent chance uh, for x flare activity uh, but I, I don't see anything here of any, uh, you know, any noteworthy mentioning uh, from these sunspots. There's really no major coronal hole activity facing us. We do have maybe a near hit or near miss, whichever one you want to call it, of a uh, CME that's coming towards a planet here around the uh, UTC time of the first. They have a little G1 class storm blip up there on the map. Uh, we'll see if that actually happens here. I was looking at the... Um, the power grid forecast model and uh, I'll show you guys again real quick what they were uh, basing this off of so we got the Sun here in the yellow earth in the green if you look there's a little small CME that gets blasted off here away from earth more towards stereo a than anything um, here's earth in the green you know we barely get anything I you know I, I really don't think it's gonna be much there uh, in terms of stirring up any significant aurora activity. We'll be lucky if we see anything reach around that G1 class storm period, that, which is the, uh, oh, which is the um, G, you know, the KP index of five, what they're forecasting up here, G1 class storm. Beautiful moon out there. Um, what else we got here? Any close approach asteroids today? Um, do to do, do. Where's our asteroid map here? Where are you? There it is. I had to zoom in really closely. My mind's actually preoccupied right now. I got to take my dog to the vet here, see what's going on with him. He's having some issues there. Um, going to the uh, bathroom, uh, both ways, and then also, uh, he's, uh, kind of hacking up some greenish mucus stuff there so i'm gonna have to take him to the vet i don't know what he got a hold of i don't think it, i don't think it'd be poison as possible but i'm not a vet so i can't really diagnose that but i gotta take him here to the vet right after this update um so my mind's a little preoccupied like you know like like you can imagine millions of miles here for the uh <clears throat> asteroids out here i don't see anything of any close nature there for now folks um let's check out the weather outlook pretty foggy out here in, in the uh, northern california area this morning we do have another storm system coming in from the south bringing with it some warmer moisture that's going to dump a lot of rain on the uh, snow that's fallen out here in the recent storms so that's all going to melt run downstream into the reservoirs which is good and then we got uh, another colder system they're going to Add some more snow that already melted up into the Sierra Nevada mountains and the rain there for the valley. It's a pretty significant uh, series of storms once again here. And it does look to stay pretty wet. Um, the seven-day quantitative precipitation forecast here. We'll check that out real quick. So you guys can see, um, not quite a repeat of what we've seen here in our last series of storms, but a decent amount. Southern California going to get... Uh, in on that as well um, probably pick up maybe two to three inches here around the Sacramento Valley a little bit more maybe up around uh, Redding and whatnot 
bunch there across the mountains of Los Angeles area, north of Malibu, and yeah, a bunch of a uh, bunch of rainfall out here again. I mean, it's good because uh, we need it. We definitely need the rain out here. Little couple days of break was good, but time to bring the rain back. All right, folks. Um, well, have a good one. I'm gonna get uh, going here and get my dog up to the vet. Oh, not looking forward to this, but I gotta gotta take care of him here. He, like I say, he just I started noticing something here two days ago with him having some issues uh, <clears throat> going to the bathroom. But I'm thinking that maybe it's a cold, wet weather. He doesn't like to uh, get out in the rain much. So I thought maybe he was just avoiding it. But now that it's clear and whatnot. Uh, uh, he's still having the issues there and also some some hacking up some some stuff there so i gotta get, go get this taken care of right away i'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on this evening folks have a good one stay safe and uh we'll chat you guys soon